Welcome one, welcome all to A Cup of Joe with, with Joe. Um, today's uh, topic is going to be open joint uh, cladding systems. Um, this is, shouldn't be very controversial, but it turns out to be rather controversial. Um, the concern about open joint cladding systems is that they allow more rain into a wall assembly and they allow air uh, into the wall assembly. And when they're talking about wall assembly, what we're really talking about is behind the cladding system. The irony is, is that open joint cladding systems tend to outperform non-open joint cladding systems because they do allow more air <laughs> behind them. Yes, a little bit more rain enters, but the air causes the assembly to dry much more. So it's always a balance between wetting and drying. Um, the drying potential of an open joint cladding system is an order of magnitude or more greater than the drying potential of a non-open joint cladding system because of the air circulation behind the cladding system. Now, you can't get something for nothing. There is going to be a little bit more rain entry but the amount of wetting created by the little bit more, the little, the slight increase in rain entry is more than offset by the drying potential. The other benefit is, is that it also promotes drying from the wall cavity itself. In other words, the framing side. Um, there's not as much drying with a non-open joint cladding system from the wall assembly and the insulation system itself through the cladding system to the outside because we don't have uh, the airflow. So we're getting a drying benefit from two perspectives. One is the back side of the cladding system itself as well as the wall assembly itself. And that, that, that's a, uh, in the old days we would call it a, a, a two for one. Um, the concept of compartmentalizing and, and sealing um, cladding systems um, comes to us from almost 50 years ago and it was the belief that if we created a sealed cavity and the air entered the cavity would be pressurized and the pressure behind the cladding would be the same as the pressure on the face of the cladding hence the term pressure equalization and so the idea is for pressure equalization to work you had to create chambers or compartments. Um, and that actually does work, but it only works for very small spaces because, or small compartments, because air is compressible. And the air on the face of, the, of a building or of a, a facade or a surface fluctuates very, very rapidly. And um, the trouble is, is that the pressure in a large cavity doesn't react as quickly to the face, the changing pressure on the face. And so we actually get a non-pressure equalization <laughs> response where we can actually have the pressure in the cavity be out of phase with the pressure on the face and we end up actually increasing rain penetration. Now, uh, in small cavities, it works brilliantly. And back in the day, in the 1950s and the 1960s, it was intended to be used for joint systems and it was originally developed for precast assemblies where we had an inner seal and an outer seal, hence the term two-stage joints. And the two-stage joints and the pressure equalization in the small spaces became the basis of modern curtain wall construction. And it's also the basis of successfully performing uh, vinyl and aluminum extruded uh, windows. So we have two-stage pressure equalization in modern windows, except for reasons that are difficult to uh, understand or appreciate. The concept is not used by the people who make wood windows. Wood windows are based on a face seal as opposed to a two-stage joint. Now, that's changing uh, because of the window technologies that are coming in from across the ocean from, of all places, the uh, old Eastern Bloc countries. So if, 
you've got a funny last name and you can't pronounce it, they're probably making really darn good wood windows. Um, now, in terms of, of wall design, um, the compartments are very, very big, and so the pressure equalization never happens. So to get maximum performance, a very well back vented wall assembly or cladding assembly uh, works better than a non well back vented cladding assembly, hence open claddings. Now, the problem with open claddings is that you also have to worry about um, ultraviolet right um, and aesthetics. I mean, if you've got joints in your cladding system, apparently you can see through the joints. That's kind of the kind of the deal. Uh, it's kind of nice that um, in modern architecture, there's some very, very, very beautiful um, aesthetic characteristics with open joints, uh, but you have to, you typically don't want to see the sheathing behind it or the or the insulation or the continuous insulation behind it. And so some type of protection needs to be provided there. And that protection could be a membrane. Um, it could be a coating on the sheathing. It, it could be a coating on rigid insulation. But something needs to be there, and it needs to be resistant to ultraviolet light. So we need UV protection, and we need aesthetics. Uh, plus, we want whatever is there is going to last or you know last the, the test of time. <laughs> it's expensive to uh, say have a 50-year cladding, cladding system and have a 10-year protection layer behind it. That that doesn't make sense. Whatever whatever you got behind your cladding system should last as long as the cladding system. If you've got a 25-year vinyl siding, you probably can get away with a 25-year you know WRB for example. But if you've got a 50 or 100 year cladding, you don't want to have, you know, 15 year flashings or 15 year water control layers or air control layers. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't make sense. So where are we with all of this? Well, it's okay to have joints. And I'm talking about the ones <laughs> that you build with, not the other kind. Uh, I leave that up as a personal discussion. But open joints, um, with drainage and back ventilation are a magnificent way to build exterior wall assemblies. And with that, a cup of Joe from Joe.